You are listening to Money Matters Podcast. Step into a world full of worth and financial intelligence. Dedicated to bringing awareness, empowering the world to financial freedom and personal development. Once again, welcome to the Money Matters Podcast. I go by the name Clever Pinero. I'm in the studio with Alex, the professional investor. And today we're going to be talking about how to grow money. Um, Alex, is, can you actually like grow money? Yes, you can grow money. It's not like um, going to the farm to go da 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 da. But there are so many ways in growing money. W- what are some of the ways someone might ask? That's what we're about to talk about today. Yeah, so basically, we're going to take you guys to the money farm, and we're going to figure out how to grow money. Before we get into today's topic, there's some vocabularies that I would like to go over so you guys can understand everything that we're going to talk about today. First vocabulary that I want you guys to keep in mind is income. Income is basically money that comes in, the money that you generate that comes to you from your job, from your business. Whatever you do, gifts, any kind of money that comes to you, that's your income on a regular basis. The second one is expenses. Expenses is basically money that you spend. When you get your income, the money out of the income that you spend to buy whatever you need, bills, anything that you spend the money on. The third one is assets. And assets are basically, um, according to uh, Robert Kiyosaki, he defines assets as anything that pays you. So anything that pays you, that put money in your pocket, anything that basically gives you money, we consider that as assets. And the fourth one is liabilities. Liabilities basically, as defined by Robert Kiyosaki again, is anything that takes money away from you. Anything that takes money from your pocket is considered as a liability. And the last one is cash flow. And cash flow is basically when money comes to you and you pay your expenses and all that stuff, the kind of the the rest that's left, that's the cash flow. What you do with that kind of money, how you, you know, play with that money, uh, whether you reinvest it or whatever you do with it, that's the cash flow. That's the money that is coming to you after you pay all your, um, all your expenses and bills and everything that comes with your money, whatever money is left, that is the cash flow. Basically, cash flow is also money that comes to you after you pay your expenses. So these are the words that I want you guys to keep in mind. And we're going to elaborate on each one of them today. We, we're going to learn how to grow money today. I think if I might come in with a few questions. If, you, if you're saying assets are things that pays you, assets are things that give you money. I have a, a plot, a plot of land just laying somewhere my own property that i've paid for can i consider that to be an asset too yes a plot of land is an asset because a plot of land had the has the potential to to appreciate you know so any any property or anything that you have that also have the potential to appreciate is considered as an asset all right so in that sense then a house um that i've built that I'm living in right now can also considered to be an asset. Well, a house cause can be considered as, as an asset and it can also be considered as a liability depending on how you um, operate in it. If you have a house and you're living in a house and you the one paying the mortgage and all the bills associated with the house, that house is a liability, but it's appreciating in value until you it gets to the point that you sell the house. You don't know how the economy is going to be by that time. If you're selling the house and the economy is good and the house actually uh, has appreciated, at that point, we can consider that as, a, as an asset. But until then, nobody knows what the future holds. So the, as, as we're talking right now, if that's the situation, then the house is a liability. The only time you can consider a house as an asset right from the own start is if you actually rent in the house, if it's a rental property. That is giving you cash flow after paying the mortgage and all the bills or expenses that comes with the house and you are able to make money from the house 
at that point, that house is paying you. So that house is considered as an asset. Okay, I'll take that. What if um, I'm just living in my house, not doing no maintenance? The house is just deteriorating that like every day, just value going down and stuff like that, even though I've not sold it. But I can tell by just looking at it that it's depreciating in value. I mean, that that also can be considered an asset as a property too or? Well, that's 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 going to be considered as a liability because it's not it's basically taking money away from you. you at the end of the day, money. at the end of the day, it's going to cost you a lot more, depending on how much you paid for it. If you don't take care of it to the point where it deteriorates, to the point where no one will want to pay for or pay how much you pay to get it, then obviously you're going to end up losing money, and it's going to definitely take money away from you. So at that point, it will become a liability. Yeah, so the, you know there are different types of assets. Like it's not just a house. Even if you have a car, and the car is actually working and bringing you money every day, every week, it's considered as an asset. Um, in the banking system, or even in the stock market, uh, some of the stocks that pays you dividends, those yeah. are all considered as asset bonds. Are considered as considered as assets. Um, you CDs. Can, you can also, definitely. Definitely have a, a, a portfolio of investments, different types and stocks, bonds or whatnot. And all those can be considered an assets. And at the end of the day, you should be able to, well, we will get into it, but you should be able to put value and see how much exactly your cash flow on that per year and uh, semi-annually or quarterly or whatever. All these can be calculated to put into your um, cash flow or see exactly how much comes in from there. Yeah, and you know, this this money thing right now that we're talking about, money is kind of a game, you know. Depending on how you spend your money, how you spread your money around, that that's what's going to determine if you're going to win the money game or you're actually going to lose the money game. So you want to pay attention to everything that we're going to talk about today. Grab a pen and paper, take notes. And by the time we finish this podcast, you're going to know where you stand, whether you were with the poor people or you were the rich people. You'll be able to figure out where you stand and then you, you will know what to do. Yeah, it's always about learning. And learning is not learning. If you don't take the knowledge we've acquired to, um, and apply that into your life to make changes to your life, to have a better life, or change things that are not really going well in your life to make them better, then the information is useless. So every little bit of information that you get, as long as you apply it to your life, put it to a positive use, at the end of the day, you can assess how much growth or development that has come into your life. You should be able to do that. If you cannot do that, then um, you're not really learning. Yeah, so when you take a look at society um, right now, society is kind of divided into like three um, different groups. There's the poor people, the middle class, and the upper class, um, supposedly the rich people. And each one of these people have different ways that they spend their money. You know, the, the poor people have ways they spend their money. The rich has ways they spend their money. And the middle class also have ways they spend their money. And these habits, these money spending habits determine um, these these people's financial um, status. Obviously, there are certain things that, that, that people who are in that poor category do that keeps them there forever. And there are things that People who are in that category, poor group category, there are things that they do that kind of puts them up on top of that group to basically bring them out of that group to the middle or who or those who are in the middle group to join them. And there are things that rich people do that keeps them there forever. So if you don't learn and change what your lifestyle how your your spending lifestyle, then you're obviously gonna be if you're in the bottom or in the poor group, you're gonna stay there for the rest of your life and probably from generations to generations, as long as you don't apply no knowledge or make any changes to your way of lives. And the question that I wanna ask our listeners is uh I want them to sit down and just go back in time and think a little bit. The past uh five, six, seven, eight years or even the past two, three, four years. What have you bought or what have you purchased that has given you money? Have you purchased anything that has given you money in return? I mean, if you purchase something for $10 or 10 cities, were you able to generate some kind of money from it? As in, 
at the end, were you able to sell the item for 15 cities or $15? Or did the item, do you still have the item now that has been generating you money since the time that you bought it? Just not, you know, just think about it um, and let us know in the comments, you know. I want you guys to also subscribe to the channel. Be trying to grow this channel to become uh, so big to the point that Everybody, you know, it will be like a community yeah. where we'll be able to share ideas and, you know, money-making strategies. And we all grow together where everybody, too, will have the opportunity to come and get that knowledge and apply it to their lives. So, like he's saying, the past six, seven years or past two years, what have you, what use have you put your money into that is generating extra or more money for you? Because you may have a specific account cd whatnot that you may not probably buy but you deposit your money there and it could be getting you some dividends or profits or interest or whatnot so what have you done with your money that's generating money for you at this point so if you had nothing that you bought that has given you money or that has um increase in worth or anything of that sort um I'm sorry to say, but you are considered as somebody with a low financial IQ. And if you're also somebody that actually bought something that's been giving you money or creating some kind of cash flow for you, you are somebody with a higher financial IQ. So, you know, your financial IQ determines how you actually um, spend your money, how you make your purchases, and how, basic, how basically you um, structure all your finances. So on that note, I think whatever we put our money into should be giving us some kind of return somehow. Yes, you want to make sure that whenever you're spending your money, the question you got to ask yourself is, this thing that I'm buying or spending my money on, is this thing going to give me money or is this going to take money away from me? Is it going to provide me money on a consistent basis? Does the thing have the potential to um, generate some kind of money for me in the future? If there's no potential for that thing to generate some kind of money from you in the future, you want to kind of think twice about it before you make that purchase. I mean, nobody's saying that you shouldn't be making purchases on certain things. Uh, I mean, we all purchase liabilities sometimes. Th that's the point of making but, money. You can't make money not to spend. You make money to spend. But whatever you put your money into, I mean, how beneficial, how much money, how much value is that going to add to your life? Are you always just consuming or are you always um, investing or or putting money into something that's not going to be be a final usage, but actually goes in into other places or proceeds to come get you more money? Yeah, and also since we all purchase liabilities, sometimes if you if you decide that you want to buy anything that's a liability, you want to make sure that you're not using your initial money to purchase that thing. You know, your initial money, you want to invest and get money, whatever money you get from the investment, you use that to purchase liabilities. That way, your initial money is always safe and it's always there generating money for you on a consistent basis. So, you're talking about capital? You say capital because um, that's that's the base. That's the foundation. Right. Because if you don't have a foundation, you can't stand. True. So, without foundation, you always... Be rest assured that I don't have to get up to go do it. That also kind of connects to passive, um, kind of passive investment. Right. Like it's there. You don't have to get up every day to go mine that stuff. It's, it's somewhere. Or even if you have to go mine it, it's still creating money. It's still creating wealth. So at the end of the day, that, that, that foundational cash that we call capital should always be untouched. That should always be there. You, that's the money you don't want to just spend. You want that money to always go and bring other money in. And that reminds me of this analogy that uh, you have an egg and you want chicken. If you, you fry that egg or you boil that egg and eat it, that's it. Yep. That's it. You've ended everything right there. But if you allow that egg to hatch and get a chicken out of it, you're always going to be eating chicken. I mean eggs and chicken because it's going to multiply. That's the idea. So you don't want to kill your egg. You don't want to eat your egg. You want to put it to hatch so you can have more chicken, chicks and whatnot, and then always have stuff. So basically, um, we're going to be talking about how each one of these groups, the poor, the middle class, and the rich spend their money. 
And by the time we go over how these people send their, spend their money, you'll be able to figure out where you stand. Yeah, you should know which class you belong to. That way, you can know where you want to find yourself in the next two, three, four years. Because we have to constantly set up these goals for ourselves. Because we can't just keep doing what you do every day and expect expect different results. So as we, we come to realize where we are, if you're comfortable, we're okay with where we are, then fine. Just keep doing what you're doing. But if you're not happy with where you are right now, that's when you have to start applying some knowledge and start making some changes to your lifestyle, your spending lifestyle to get yourself to the next stage. And also the first step to solving any problem is um, to admit that you have a problem in Definitely. the first place. Definitely. So if you're not going to be true to yourself, you're not, you're not going to be able to help yourself. So you got to be true to yourself and know exactly where you stand and accept it and then try to um, find change. Yeah, at this point, we're not here to put you down or anything. We want to bring awareness, knowledge to uh, to ourselves so we can actually look at ourselves and tell ourselves, this is where I'm at based on my lifestyle. All we're doing, we just want to spread information so we can make some changes to our lives to make us better, to bring us to the next stage, to take us to the next level because we don't want to keep living in that bottom level. We want to rise. We want to move to the next one. So we're not here to put you down, calling nobody poor. But based on the definition, if you know that you fit into a certain category and you're not happy at that spot where you are right now, it's up to you to get up and make some changes to get to the next level. So um, this is how the poor people spend their money. When poor people get paid from their job, usually most poor people have jobs. They don't have any other business or anything like that. When they get from they get paid from their job, the money that comes out it goes into the expenses, oh, the wow. bill, the bills they have, um, uh, with credit cards, whatever, whoever they owe and stuff like that. That money goes there, and sometimes the money is not even enough. Interesting. And this is the cycle for these guys. You know, they go through this every time they get paid, every month, every day, every week, every month, every year. It's like it never stops. And that's why they are considered poor because they don't have enough money to take care of themselves. They don't have enough money to do anything else other than pay bills and maybe eat. But hey, I'm working so hard, man. So you can't tell me not to um, gratify myself when I get paid. I've seen these sneakers for a long time. I've seen these shoes that I, I think it will look good on me. So why not get it when I get paid? Because I get up every morning to go do this work that I don't want to do. Yeah, some of these poor people don't even, by the time they finish paying all these expenses, they don't even have the money for any sneakers or anything like that. Oh, wow. You know, this is the the bottom. You know, th- these people, they, they don't have money to be playing around. So if I don't have money to be paying around, how am I going to be able to put that money to something that, that, that other than my bills? Because it's not even enough to make these bills. Well, you know, they're always trying to um, get rid of the bills and they don't find any other strategy. And they keep doing the same thing over and over and over. And the results keep staying the same. Yeah. So that's I, I, how um, these poor people spend their money. Yeah. I think um, I think it was a guru, some guru that, that asked people that who wanted to be rich. And then I think um, he had a few people come up. And then he told them, all right, meet me at the beach at 2 a.m. on Thursday morning. So these, I think it was two or three guys that I went to go meet him and he put him somewhere and, and asked them to come one after the other. So the first guy came and he walked a little deeper into the, the ocean with them. So when he got to about the waist high, he tried to dip that guy, the guy who came to figure out the ways to make money. He, he brought that guy with him and into the ocean and tried to push his head into the ocean, causing him to suffocate. So after that guy standing there, he couldn't breathe. He started struggling, trying to uh, get some air, some breathing air. So he was struggling, doing everything to come up, get his head up so he can catch some bit of fresh air. So as soon as he got his head up and took that big sigh, big breath of air, the guy said to him, if you're not struggling like that to get rich, then it means you're not really trying. So if your money is not enough. It's just enough to offset your bills, your monthly bills, and put some food on the table and cannot do anything else or can't put some to any type of investment. Then you are locked in that cycle. Yeah, there's a lot of people living in this situation, you know, living paycheck to paycheck. 
And if you are like that, then it means you have to accept or you have come to accept the fact that I'm going to have to wake up every morning to go to work before I can eat, before I can pay these bills. And if you're not comfortable with that, then this is when you have to start looking around, start thinking, how can I change this lifestyle? What do I have to do? Do I need a second job? Do I need a side gig somewhere to be making extra money to be able to put it into some type of investment? Because at the end of the day, you want to have money somewhere, some type, some type of an investment, something that will be generating money without you actually putting your effort daily into that specific thing. And the middle class, um, the way the middle class also spend their money is once the income come in, you know, most of most of the people in the middle class also have jobs, you know, but these people have some differences. The middle class. They have good paying jobs. Okay. You know, so they make good money. Make good money. So they're able to yeah, pay they, the bills. They make and good have money. Some, some, some left. So when their money come in, they pay their expenses and whatever money is left, they use it to buy liabilities. Oh, wow. You know, they buy, they will buy the nice suit. They will buy a car, a boat. Um, they will buy like, you know, um, the new bike. Um, they will buy, you know stuff like the newest watch. They, you know, they have. They just buy things that that don't basically generate no money for generate them. or bring any any value. Wealth. They buy things that depreciate. That depreciate. Yes, that's another word to pay attention to. They buy all the. You know, these are the nicest things that most people want. They buy all these things, and all the money runs out, and they get the next check. And they go through the same process. You know, they're still paying that new, for the new car. They're still paying for the boat. They're still paying for the bike. They're still paying for the new toy. Like they always, you know, from the outside, they looks real nice. Everything is on point. You think they're living good. Everything is nice, but their pockets are empty. The bank account is empty. Interesting. Well, their pockets may be empty, but they're living the life. They got the best shoes. They got the best shoes, the, the motorcycles, the jet skis, and all these other things. So why not? These people are three to two to three paychecks away from joining the poor class. So if you're one of these people and you are two to three paychecks away from joining the poor class, I think um, you're not living the best life like that. From the outside, everybody think you're good, but you know yourself that you're not good. And you may be two, two to three paychecks from joining the poor class, but you pretty much just like them. You're living paycheck to paycheck. All your money, you make the money. It's not like the poor people who might not be making the money or don't make the money. You make the money, but the money even gets spent before it, it actually touches your account. Right. That means you're pretty much just not making any good use of what you're getting. You're just making to consume. Nothing is put to the side for the future or to generate money by itself. That's the main problem with this group. And the upper class, which is the rich people, these are people with the highest financial IQ. So these people are very smart. And these are the people that you want to learn from and people that you want to follow their tactics or their strategies. When these people get paid, um, sometimes from other businesses or the jobs that they do, when the money comes in, the income, that money goes straight into assets. You know, they purchase assets first before they pay anything else. So their money is all, once the money come in, the money goes into the assets. The assets generate money and they use that money to purchase whatever they want. So every money that's coming to them is going to work. The money itself is going to work. It's not them working. It's the money that's going to work. So even if they have the nicest things, they don't use their foundational money, the capital. They don't use their initial money to purchase any kind of um, liabilities. Any, anything nice they have is coming from as money from the assets that they bought. It's, it's part of the cash flow from the assets that they bought, that they spent. So if you see somebody, um, a rich person, riding a nice bike or a nice car, don't just assume that he went to the dealership and just you know financed that car and he's paying it the same way that you paying it. Right. He's not waiting for his paycheck right. to come to right. pay it. He's waiting for the rental property that he has to generate income that so he can flow. use that cash flow money to pay for the the bike or the car. They're not using their initial money. That money is going to be coming every month. It's going to be coming every month. They're going to get that money from the rental property every month. If they own an Uber, 
that Uber is going to generate, generate money for them money. every day. If they own any kind of property, they make sure that property is going to give them money on a consistent basis. It has the potential to produce cash flow. So if I may say, they probably have multiple streams of income. Basically. So the way I was explaining it, when their money comes in, they spend that money on assets. The assets generate money for them. So once they get the money, they reinvest the money from the assets into different assets. So the money they get from the other assets, they also reinvest it into different assets. And it's the process. And these guys are always multiplying their assets. Right. Barely spent anything on liabilities. So I'm going to give you an example as in the money comes in, they buy a Uber. Uber generate money. They use that money to buy another Uber. That Uber generates money, they buy another one. So it keeps going on and on and on and on. The money keeps growing and growing it and growing. Just keeps growing. They buy a, a, a rental property. They buy an apartment. The money comes in, they buy another apartment. The right. money comes in, they buy another apartment. On a consistent basis. So what they spent, like you said, is the cash flow, is the proceeds from whatever their investments, whatever their assets are. They don't spend the money to that needed needs to be used to buy an asset. No, they don't they don't spend the initial money. They're always keeping their money. That's really smart. You know, when they save their money, they never lose that money because that yes. money goes into an asset and it's gonna keep generating money. So this is how you actually grow money. When we when we name this topic how to grow money, this is how you actually grow money by buying assets that will generate money for you in a consistent basis. Every time you need money. Money, money is going to be available for you. So it's just pretty much not eating your egg. Always having them to hatch. So you can make those chickens and have those chickens make more eggs for you. So you can have an egg whenever you want one. Exactly. Because when you, when you, you know, sometimes when you outside, you see people like, you know, rich people outside driving nice cars, wearing nice clothes. And you don't know how these people operate. And you from the poor class or the middle class. And you want to compete with these people? At the end of the day, it's not going to help you because these people are, you know, their financial IQ is very high. They know what they're doing. They buy the expensive stuff because that money is not their money. It's money that they're making from other businesses. So it's not just cars and rental properties. They create other businesses too that generates money. They buy other people's businesses. They also partner with other people that have businesses. They they find ways to generate money. They don't they don't go to work. And punch in and get paid on an hourly basis or get paid every month. They you get paid every day, every day, every every minute, day, every, every minute. So, so, this is, so I think um, looking at it from a distance, you can you can probably not be able to tell the difference between those in the second class, those in the middle group, and those who are rich because they're all using nice things. Yeah, I mean, you can't tell. You can't tell from the outside. Looking at it from the looking outside, at it from you the outside, tell, you, not, you can't tell. When you get closer and see where their source of incomes are coming from, their right. streams of income these people have, that's when you would actually know who is actually living the life. Because you may see from the outside that these guys both have nice motorcycles, nice jet skis, nice boats. But at the end of the day, how are they paying for them? Yeah, the people, the, the middle class, they're using, you know, like you said, they, they're eating their eggs. They're eating their eggs. They're using the money that they they sweating for every day to go pay for these things without those things generating any sorts of money for them or wealth. But the rich people, those in the top class, invest their money into different types of assets and have these assets generate money to pay for their luxurious lives. Yeah, so... When you pay attention to when you pay attention to all these three people, what you see is there's really no lower class and no middle class. It's just a bunch of workers and the investor class. The people that are investing and making money and the people who are working for a living. The poor middle the poor class, they're working for a living. The middle class, they're working for a living. It's only the investors, the rich people who are investing their money and creating revenue on a regular basis, creating businesses, hiring these poor mid- poor and middle class people and making money off them over and over and over and over. So these are the people that you want to learn from. You want to learn their strategies and pay attention to whatever they're doing and copy it. 
you definitely want to learn from these people because we all know that waking up every morning to go do that nine, nine to five is not fun. And you would want to stop as soon as possible, as soon as you can. But if you don't have any form of investment generating any type of income for you, 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 you are locked. You are done. You are, you'll be left in that zone forever because you have to live. You have to work to live. If you don't have the money to pay your rent, you're not going to have roof over your head. And if you don't have that money to put something on your table to eat, you're not going to have food in your stomach. So you'd be forced to work. But if you don't put your, your, your money, the money that you're making into any type of an investment, then it means you are, you are done. So we have to look for ways to, to stop just, um, making money to eat, making money to pay rent, many, making money to just consume. We have to start enjoying money from our investments, the proceeds from our investment, dividends and interest and stuff like that. We have to start looking into those things. So this all boils down to knowing the difference between assets and liabilities. Knowing that when you get paid, you want to spend some of the money to purchase assets, not liabilities. Purchase assets and use the money that comes out of the assets to buy liabilities. That way you have the asset there generating money for you every day. That's exactly what you want to do because um, if you are always working to eat, I said that before, you're going to have to work every day. And you are not going to leave anything to your children. So they are going also going to have to live the same lifestyle. They, they, there's not going to be any cushion for them to build on, any foundation for them to build on. You guys already know everything that we, we, we talked about today. You already know where you stand. You know which class you fall in. You want to make sure that you do you know, everything that you can to get out of the class that you're in if you don't like it. Um, the goal is to get into the investor class. You know, There's nothing wrong with working. There's nothing wrong with doing business. You want to make sure if you like your job, you keep your job, but you still want to invest. Find ways to double your money. Find ways to create other multiple uh, streams of income. Find ways to generate income. It doesn't have to be just your job. Your job is only going to make you a living. Your job is not going to make you rich. The, well, the money that comes out of your job, what you do with it, is what determines your status. So if you want to be part of the investor class, you want to be rich, like the rich people you see in your country, in your neighborhood, this is what they're doing. This is, there's nothing to it. This is all they're doing. They're purchasing assets over and over and over. They're finding ways to, to come up with uh, um, things that, is, that are going to help them generate money, and that's all they're spending their money on. So this is the people that you want to learn from and start purchasing assets today. Yep. And it all starts with knowing where you stand, accepting where you are, acknowledging that, yes, you are poor based on your spending lifestyle. If you come to note this, if you come to accept this, then that's when it starts. So now this is where I'm at and I'm not happy with where I'm at right now. So where do I, what do I do? Where do I go? What changes do I need to make? That's when you start with budgeting and everything. You have to start budgeting for everything, writing down everything, what you think you need, what you think you could live without and all of those things. And then because you have to find a way to make, have extra, have a little something to be put into some type of an investment. Yep. So try subscribe to your channel. Subscribe, subscribe, subscribe. We want to keep this movement going on. Subscribe to the channel. Tell other people to subscribe. And we're going to come back with, you know, we're going to come with more content like this so you guys can learn from it. Yes, we're not going to stop sharing. Make sure you pass this information on to your brother or sister so those, they too will be in that light. Hey, thanks for listening. That's all for today. Until we meet again next time, never stop learning. Thank you for listening. Subscribe to our channel. Email us at themoneymatterspodcast at gmail.com.